Describing relationships between data sets is really tricky, and there's a few really important keywords that you need to know. Uh, relationships can be directly proportional, they can also be inversely proportional, and we can look at the rate of change. There's lots of other relationships as well, but these are the main ones we're going to talk about. It's important you do, don't use vague terms like positive correlation or negative correlation, because that can mean either the graph goes up or down, but doesn't describe how it goes up or down. So these are sort of preferred phrases at GCSE Science. So something is directly proportional if it is a straight line and through the origin. So the one on the left here, this is an example of Hooke's law, which you'll learn about in P2 physics. And as the extension, as, as you apply more force to a spring, as in hang more masses on the bottom, then there will be a directly proportional increase in the extension of the spring. So it kind of makes sense. More weight on a spring will make it stretch more. And if there's no force applied, then there shouldn't be any extension. Uh, and the next one, this is an example of Ohm's law, where the voltage and the current are directly proportional, straight line through the origin. Something is inversely proportional if, uh, as one value goes up, the other one goes down. This is an example. The more singles Justin Bieber releases, the less I seem to care. This is one of the trickier parts, rates of change and describing them. Now, graphs have many interesting points, like intercepts, the maximums, the minimums, but the gradient is one of the most important things, and it tells you how quickly something is changing in comparison to something else. So we've got some x, y graphs here. Here, the gradient is, this is obviously directly proportional as well. This is also directly proportional because it's a straight line through the origin, but the gradient is not as steep. Uh, remember, the gradient is the difference in the change in y over the difference in the change in x, so rise over run or dy over x, uh, dx, sorry, uh, however you want to look at it. This is also telling you about the rate of change, but it's not directly proportional, but it has the same rate of change as line A. So A is increasing, the rate is increasing. So as X increases, Y increases at a constant rate because the slope is a straight line. B is increasing at the same rate, same rate as B, but it is not directly proportional. And C is still directly proportional because it goes through the origin, but it's increasing less. It doesn't, you don't get as much increase in Y for a similar increase in X. Now this is a bit of a trickier one. What's happening to the gradient in the line here? Well, the rate is increasing because the graph is going up, but not only that, the rate of its increase itself is also increasing. So if you consider this to be a speed time graph, you would start off uh, accelerating, but then you're accelerating more as we get to about two thirds of the way down the graph and it starts to curve up. The gradient is getting steeper and steeper. This graph here represents a rate that is increasing, but the gradient tends towards zero there. The gradient will be zero where the line is flat right at the top. So it's increasing, but at a decreasing rate as we get to the top. So it will stay constant for the Y value. Here's your turn. See what you can make of these graphs. They're all speed uh, time graphs. So it might be worth pausing the video once you see the graphs so you can take some time to write down your answers and then compare them. So these are the graphs, A, B, C, D, E, and F. How would you describe them? If you want to, pause the video now. And if you didn't pause the video, here are the answers. Um, A is directly proportional. B is directly proportional, but if you want to compare that with A, it's uh, increasing a less, uh, slower rate. C is inversely proportional. D is de uh, decreasing at a decreasing rate. Okay, so the gradient is tending towards zero. It looks like it would eventually level out there. E is increasing at an increasing rate. And F is a weird one, just to kind of throw you off a bit. Uh, it has a peak in the middle, so it looks like there's some sort of optimum. Uh, say this was, a, if we're look, looking in biology, this would be something for enzyme activity and temperature. But in this case, someone's just gone really, really fast and slowed down. 
Hope you did well.